morning and it is an absolutely stunning morning uh, Friday morning very cold but absolutely beautiful today um, and last night after I'd posted yesterday's video uh, Williams of course launched their brand new FW41 car for the 2018 F1 season um, I have been looking at the pictures overnight uh, having a look at the finer details of it I'm just going to take the dog for a walk and then get back and talk you through some of the things that I've spotted. Right, so Williams unveiled their FW41, the 2018 Challenger, um, which they obviously desperately hope is going to catapult them back up towards the front of the grid. Um, they've got a tough task this year, Williams, because we expect McLaren to be much, much stronger. We expect Renault to be much, much stronger. We still expect Force India, who have the same Mercedes power unit in the back, of course, to be strong. That fight in the midfield that Williams have sort of tumbled towards the back of or are tumbling towards the back of, I think is going to be tighter than ever. Anyway, this is what they hope will give them a chance at fighting their way back towards the front. And I mean, I've only had, we've only got two official pictures uh, released from Williams at the moment, although there are more uh, pictures kind of floating around, screenshots from a, a video that was released as well, floating around the net. So I've had a little look at a few of the, the images that I've seen. You can't see a huge amount. What seems to be the trend nowadays is for the F1 teams to release these digital renders. This is not the real car, digital render of the car. In very And they really darken up the areas they don't want you to see, like the front wing, like the detail around the suspension and barge board areas, certainly the diffuser. They don't want anybody having a real close up look at that. Um, but anyway, we've lightened up the images a little bit so you can see certain elements. I mean, the first thing about the front wing, it does have an extra uh, element to it to the, from the one that they finished the year with last year. But I wouldn't pay too much attention to the front wing at the moment, because by the time this thing goes testing and certainly by the time it goes racing, it won't be running with this configuration on the front. I'm almost certain of it. If we rise up from the, the nose cone on the front wing, uh, this line that you can see here is the exit of an S of an S duct. Uh, now they have run an S duct before, but this one seems larger, more aggressive. Um, and actually what happens, and I'll show you the, the next picture, um, with this car, the angle between the nose cone and the top of the chassis is much more acute. Uh, last year it was a much smoother rounder curve and so the airflow on this this type of arrangement is much more likely to pass up the front wing and detach itself from the top of the chassis because of that acute angle so the s duct now will have to work pretty hard in creating a smooth solid line of a stream of airflow that's taken from underneath the nose and a duct under here passed through the s duct inside and then released along the top edge of this chassis to try and keep the airflow attached even more important, I guess, this year, because uh, as it does pass up along the top of the chassis, we've now got not just the driver's helmet in the way, which is a big obstacle, but that great big halo. So really important that they condition that flow before it gets to those real big obstacles up there. So um, the reason, by the way, that this is now a, a more acute angle is because I think they've tried to raise up the underside of the chassis um, to allow more airflow to pass through and, and work through these barge boards and eventually onto the rear. And in doing that, what they've done, you can't really see from this image, but there is um, a bit like the Mercedes had last year, a big scoop or a big vein that runs right from the bottom of the nose all the way back here towards that sort of beginning of that barge board and chassis area. Um, very similar to what Mercedes had uh, in 2017. And it's no coincidence, of course, that Paddy Lowe was now leading up the design team uh, for this car, uh, having come from Mercedes. So there are a few details from Mercedes on there and that's one of the biggest and certainly most obvious um, trying to scoop a lot of air through here work it really hard through the front suspension cleanly through the front suspension working through these barge boards which also are a lot more detailed this year a big turning a big vein here which acts as a stay for this outer barge board piece here connects to the chassis but also conditions the flow towards these side pods uh, and the side pods this year are actually very much like the ferrari side pods of last year a much uh, higher opening a much smaller opening but because it's smaller it needs to have these large veins they're also pushed back slightly by the way to make room for these large veins here which uh, again condition and direct that airflow straight into the, the side pod um, so that although it has a smaller opening the cooling capacity or the cooling capability 
should be, uh, you know, obviously they hope, uh, enough to cope with the demands that a Formula One car needs. Um, I mean, one of the other appointments at Williams was Dirk De Beer, who was um, heading up the aerodynamic team at Ferrari last year before moving across uh, to Williams. So this side pod, side pod arrangement here is very much like the Ferrari of 2017. And, and it's interesting when people move from team to team because, you know, they do bring all of that uh, sort of knowledge and that understanding of how other teams operate. And it completely contributes, and you can see it in this car, uh, to the design philosophy of the new, you know, the new Williams car. So influences from other teams, which is not unusual, of course. Um, with Paddy Lowe now overseeing all of this, he has in-depth, in hugely in-depth knowledge of how the dominant team for the last few years in Mercedes has worked, how they've created their cars, how they've developed their cars, and that will be invaluable knowledge now to Williams. Um, so I think uh, one of the things I've spotted, I think the, the wing mirrors here look like they're on stalks, which are much higher up. Uh, and I guess that is to try and overcome the, the halo uh, to get around the, the vision problems that a driver might have with the halo behind him. On the Haas, it looked to me like they, they were out wider than before on stalks, whereas the Williams, to me, seems to be higher up. Um, the the halo painted white, of course, don't let me know what you think about that. Um, it stands out, obviously, hugely against this black background, but probably blends in nicer with the paint job of the car, perhaps. I don't know. Um the airbox has changed shape um, and actually also looks a bit Mercedes-like up there uh, with the splitters inside the airbox now at the front, whereas last year I think they were much further down, you couldn't see them. But also the shape has changed and I also wonder if that is could be a, a sort of direct copy or a translation of what Mercedes did, but it might also have something to do with the fact that the airflow coming off the halo uh, will now hugely impact the airflow going into the airbox. So that shape that has changed a little bit. It looks like a slightly more aggressive undercut underneath that airbox too. Um, moving further back, uh, we have a, a slightly larger shark fin um, than we saw on the, the Haas car. I think that's about as big as you can go within the regulations um, by the look of it. Um, you know, sponsors logos, the teams wanted to keep some of that for sponsors logos, for, for branding, that the space that they can sell. Um, and that is about as much, as I say, as I think they can achieve. Um, of course, much less than we had last year. There is on this Williams, and I think there was one on the Haas, but it was very difficult to see, a sort of lower T-wing um, at the back of that shark fin, just on there really to to drive the airflow towards the rear wing. It's it's much less. These T-wings were, were always much less about generating downforce in themselves as they were about directing airflow to other places like the rear wing, like the back of the diffuser, cleaning up that airflow before it hits those all important aerodynamic surfaces. Uh, and that's exactly what this one's doing. Tiny little end plates on the end of it. it I think there's actually a, a sort of split section or a double section of that T-wing in between uh, the two stays there or the two mounts for the rear wing, which also, by the way, is new because last year Williams had a single mount for their rear wing. Uh, this year they've gone with a double. Um, the uh, floor uh, also has lots of uh, tyre squirt slots along here, all again just, design, just in there really to, to try and clean up that airflow. You know, the tyres on a Formula One car are an aerodynamicist's worst nightmare, particularly the front ones because they move, of course, as the steering wheel turns, so it's not a fixed aerodynamic surface. But also the rear, they're a big unaerodynamic shape and, of course, they're rotating. So... These slots and gaps that you see on lots of the Formula One cars now are all there to try and squirt that um, or, or clean up that tyre squirt, which is the airflow that spits out from underneath the rotating surface of the tyre as it hits the floor. They're all about conditioning that flow because this is a really important area as the airflow comes through here and heads towards the diffuser where a lot of the downforce is generated. These higher side pods that are now on this year's Williams will also allow much cleaner flow and a much um, uh, much more aggressive flow in the undercut of the side pod to be worked around the side of the car and out towards that, that diffuser as well, which, again, hugely important for generating downforce, as much so as the rear wings are themselves, which is what most people assume is the downforce generator. Um, that's about as much as you can see on this particular shot and, and the two shots that have been released. On another shot that I saw floating around the internet, maybe a screenshot from the video, you could kind of see the diffuser, which also looks much more um, aggressive in terms of the way that it expands at the back of the car. It has much more detail like diffu uh, like uh, gurney flaps on some of the, um, the, the, the elements of that diffuser. Um, last year on the Williams, I guess that was 
a little bit more simplified, uh, I think, in terms of it didn't look as detailed as a lot of the other cars. This year, I guess, again, with influence from people like Dirk De Beers and, and uh, Paddy Lowe, of course, it really does look like it's a much more detailed, um, much more thought about area of the car and, uh, and, and hopefully will return uh, you know, a decent amount of downforce for them. Um, they still, of course, have the Mercedes power unit, which will, you know, any car with that Mercedes power unit, A, has a huge amount of power, but also has great reliability. And this year, particularly when we now go down to each one of these power units having to last essentially seven races, only three power units per car to last 21 events. That's a real tall order. So if you've got a Mercedes, you're already probably in pretty good shape, given that the reliability they've had for the last few years has been absolutely excellent. Um, so anyway, I think it looks quite nice. I quite like the look of it. It's again, talking about, as I did with the uh, the Haas car the other day, I prefer the look of, of the Formula One cars in 2018. Aside from the halo, I much prefer this area without this giant shark fin and, and silly kind of coat hanger T-wins on the back. Um, so I think we've got more aesthetically pleasing cars. I don't think the halo is going to be an issue for very long. I think it'll fade into insignificance uh, with it without you know very much time passing. Um, and this is a car that Williams desperately need to be able to work and, and, and move them forward up the grid. Two very inexperienced drivers driving this, of course, Lance Stroll and uh, Sergei Sorokin. It's going to make the engineering side of the team pretty tough because they don't have an experienced driver who can lead the engineering team. It's going to be the engineering team, in some regards, leading the drivers, which is not what a team of Formula One engineers want. Anyway, we shall have to wait and see how it does. And there are more cars to be released next week. So we'll talk about them after the weekend. Have a great weekend. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to the channel because I'll try and cover all of these new F1 car launches over the next couple of weeks and, of course, testing and, of course, once we go racing again. Um, share it around with your mates, tell everybody, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Have a good weekend. Um...